Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again with another video and today I'm going to be doing a Rivals 2 set review. This time it's between Kumi and Seth. So Maple Rano we got going on, but this is going to be pretty sweet though because it's two players I've never covered before. So uh, let's sit back, relax, and get into it. All right, game one is on Jules Veil. Vale. Let's see what's going on. So he again, starts off with Dart, <laughs> and then uh, well, Kumi starts off, I should say, with Maple Seed, and Seth starts off with Ronald Dart, and that's just what you can expect from. Uh, it starts usually with the uh, and the main you know gimmick or mechanic is usually what what uh, is the opener. So we're gonna see a lot of Rano checking Maple with Darts in this set, and we're gonna see a lot of rushdown coming from Seth's Maple. Or, I'm sorry, Kumi's Maple. Oh, a little crouch cancel wall right there. Go back. Gets back here for moving too much on that plat. Plat drop up here doesn't connect, keeps it moving. Tries to get a plat drop fair, doesn't connect, keeps it moving, but runs into uh, a Kumi F tilt. But then gets his run in down tilt. But then, oh, and then gets uh, grabbed out of down tilt, which is kind of nice here. And then gets his recovery caught by back, weak back here. And because it's so weak, uh, he actually has enough frames to get a crouch out. And this crouch results in his own retaliation with his own down tilt. Uh, and now we're getting an up throw off of our own down tilt. And it's like the exact same sequence, but just reversed. These characters are kind of similar with their down tilts. It's kind of funny. <laughs> That's kind of sweet. So we're just doing some movement, looking for an opening from Maple. Going to use her speed to really set the pace in this set. And Ronald's going to have to use his darts to really uh, to equal out the fact that he's not as fast as Maple, even though he is pretty fast already. Uh, and he used this to keep her out. Ooh, good. Uh, tiny makes up on that recovery. Using the wall jump to really stall out when you can uh, grab the ledge. Ooh, speaking of grabbing the ledge, looking for that quick ledge grab. Ooh, and the back throw into Lily. Confirm. Oh, catches Rano slightly too high above the ledge uh, after that air dodge. Just trying to mix up his recovery, not have to always up B, but if you're not careful, you might still be exposed. I like that F tilt. This is kind of crazy. I don't know. This, that's the whole scenario. Just I don't even know how, how good Ronald's fare is on shield, but it looked really good right there is kind of all I'm really trying to say. Uh, <laughs> dang. Oh, Dacus out of that was so nice. What is that? Down air, fair, up throw, Dacus, forward air off stage. Ronald's combo game is so sweet in this game. Up throw, Dacus again. Yep, you can't get there any other way. Uh, forward air. Oh, ooh, back air. Well, this is some nice catches on this on this maple recovery. See, Ronald has these quick aerials, so you can kind of like just harass you trying to recover. A lot of, you know, locks and I couldn't really couldn't really do this the same way. He would have to use a little more projectiles. This is really nice. Ooh, fair spike, which puts Ronald in the force flinch into a, into an up tilt and then back down in the, kind of looking like Falco, you know? Spike in the, into a launch, spike in the launch, spike in the launch. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> looking like, like melee Falco. Down tilt, down strong. Oh, that's something I saw a little earlier, I forgot. Maple can do like down to in the down strong at higher percent, which is kind of a gross way to get a kill. And this was insane because I think Lily just replaced the knockback. 101. Let me see. So, right. So you get four throw, which puts you at 97. And then Lily just snapped at you. Which puts you at 101, which now changed the, the knockback you're taking, which I think is the reason this was true. <laughs> and you drifted into it. Or at least the eye in too hard. And that that is so insane. Dang, Maple is Maple is so gross when Lily's out. You really cannot You cannot play her game when Lily's out. You will just die. Ooh, up tilt, cross up after the, I mean, up tilt after the cross up on shield. Nice patience and waited and reacted to that, uh, that tech roll in here. The down tilt, uh, yep. And you jump back there just in case the tech roll in was given to him. 
Yeah, Seth's super clean on this Rano. Ooh, Kumi's. I actually like both their styles on both these characters. This is kind of why I wanted to cover this set anyway. They both kind of have a pretty clean, simple style. Uh, but they can kind of dig deep where it matters, and that's and it's kind of hype. Dash attack into re oh double jump catch with the fair grab ledge. Make sure he can't grab it, and then you take game one. I mean, if I was to say anything, I would say maybe more Rano cheese off stage. I mean, he's going for some, but it's not like disconnecting just because there's a lot of mix-ups uh, on Maple's half that she can do to recover. But Rano, I think he needs to, not saying Seth particularly, but like in general, I think Rano really needs to edge guard Maple in this matchup with darts and fair because he can kind of harass her off stage. I think, a little easier than other characters with darts and his tilts and his aerials all being pretty fast. Like right here, I think should be, oh, that was a nice weight though. And regardless, that was sick. Like just give you all that space on purpose so you can play into me and then up tilt you off the stage anyway, and then punish that down there on shield into, what was that down tilt fair at the end? That was actually back air, oh my gosh. Back air, reverse hit back air out of shield into fair uh, galaxy off stage. That was, all that was so clean. That play was crazy. Oh, almost gets that landing with the tongue, but it's a little too slow. Uh, hard to react to Maple when she's already kind of moving at you. That's another reason. So that's what I'm saying. This is what Kumi needs to do a little more. Is just that uh, use the speed of Maple to kind of set the pace. Because the moment you start setting the pace with this speed, you you notice how easy it is for Maple just to start winning suddenly. Sometimes you just because she just go kind of overwhelming you. But right now she's kind of getting overwhelmed by this Rhino Tech Chase. Uh, so ooh, wait, I think this is the opening. I was talking about yep, dash attack into a Tech Chase, but can't. Follow up because it's too far away. Put down. Oh, that was a smart awareness. Put Lily down right here. I love that. Okay, you took all this space. So you're like, okay, well, I have all this time while he's off stage. Put down Lily and keep it moving. Now, right, that does actually get Ron enough time to set up that tongue. Uh, so that is kind of kind of a crazy read you have to make after that, or just reaction you have to make. Dang, it kind of almost gets that that. Oh my gosh, these guys are kind of fast. Gets that Lily parry into down strong attempt, but just a little too far away to make that a true confirm on maple and then another down strong galaxy and maple at 105 before the hit it's kind of gross it, like rano rano normally cannot just walk up and kill you like that uh that's kind of gross <laughs> whoa that, that new down strong is not playing around up throw up air in a dacus before he gets to the platform up air to dacus to catch him before he gets down like this is crazy this dacus is so smart right here right because because look at how like the horizontal distance Maple has means that Rano's da dash attack would not reach her. Like nothing Rano could have done here other than Dacus would have knocked her back up and reached her this far away from the platform. So smart as hell Dacus to keep the combo going and Seth is holding or uh, Kumi's holding in here because that was such a surprise continuation. And so he gets his up air, but now Kumi gets the correct DI away from the stage. And so, well, not that, well, it's just a good guess because now uh, Kumi or Seth cannot follow up off of that combo which makes this fair not true and now he kind of overextends and lets maple return back to the stage so that that entire interaction was honestly brilliant by seth like his rondo's combo game is kind of gross uh down smash oh wake up down smash that's that's something y'all got okay this is something that rondo could not do in rivals one wake up quick smash attack uh, a few characters had that privilege like forest burn zetter burn well less so zetter burn because his down smash starts behind him but forest burn um, even Sylvanos a little bit, uh, or Kane, the characters with really fast down smashes can basically do a surprise wake up down smash and kill you, uh, or at least like as a good, it's like a DP, get off of me, and Ronald never had that because his up smash was like, it's a little too slow for that, and so you kind of have that now in this, in this new down smash, so he even has another defensive, uh, application when he's, uh, laying on the ground now, that's actually nice. Speaking of nice, that Lily combo was almost super sick. It killed, uh, well, it's kind of, I mean, it would have killed, but, you know, it's, it's like three socks to one right now, so it kind of doesn't matter if you take one, you kind of need all three <laughs> at this point. Oh, great sweet spot. Okay, no pummel special. I guess he just wants the damage, doesn't, uh, believe that, uh, he's gonna get the, the, uh, poppy seed. Up throw, this needs to, you can't even confirm at 193. Man, that, that kind of sucks. Okay, F strong though, reaches off stage and, and takes the first stock from uh, Seth's Rano. Oh, nice uh, parry on Lily. 
that's honestly the best way to deal with Lily in this game because even though they let you hit hit or attack Lily, um, Lily will then just reactivate anyway. So you you really can only get rid of Lily um, like that like that um, consistently with Parry. And if you just hit Lily, she'll just reactivate in like another second later anyway. And so you have to have to keep hitting Lily at that point, which can open yourself up to whiff punishes. So you're better off just parrying Lily like that. Okay, back air. Oh gosh, that is not the fair you want to take there, cause you're like at like such a weird part of the stage. That like I swear, see this like re weird green horizontal thing. It's like this is like you bounce off the wall, kind of like that's like that it indicates like you bounced off of like a surface, you know? So like. It just, I don't know, it's just kind of weird, because, like, that, this tech, you would have to do so quickly. It's just such an awkward tech. Because it's basically, like, you would have to do it here. Like, om almost, like, because it looks like Maple is above the wall. You see, like, this is such, this, this happens in Rivals, too, sometimes. I mean, this happens in Rivals of Ether too, sometimes. <laughs> but it happens, I feel like, more fre frequently in this game, where, like, you're above the lip of the stage, but then you, I think you accidentally SDI yourself off stage into the wall and then you have like a weird ass tech timing and then you just kind of miss it because it's so early and then you just die all right we're on game three up throw nair okay doesn't get the follow-up but gets a reversal for it actually oh but another fair from the ledge i wonder if uh seth is seeing that and gonna respond with like a parry or even just this you know spot dodge or just uh, out maneuver on the third time if if it comes up down tilt, Ooh, looking for that down smash, but he's only at 74, so it's not going to connect. Oh, but looking for it again anyway, and it's going to connect now that it's at 80 to 90. Or just DI is different, you know. That that, that could be a very uh, deadly confirm, to be honest. That uh, Maple's down tilt to down strong. Ooh, looking for another down. She's just fiending for down tilts. Oh, man, Maple's scary. Oh, that's such a quick move, too. Okay, so Maple's going to be fishing for down tilt later well, I gotta just realize that myself is what I'm trying to say. Okay, charges darts in between stocks. Very smart because it gives you a free neutral win if it hits. Looking for a 45 degree angle. Well, good Dacus. Yep, up throw Dacus again. Back air. Oh, yeah, I love this, this Dacus combo. Oh, I missed the darts. That would have been a great follow up uh, or extender, I mean. Because he, I don't even think he shielded those or would have shielded those. Let me see. Yep. Right, he was attacking, so yeah, he wouldn't have even, like, sh defended against that. So that was a good dart, he just messes up the, uh, direction. And now he's in disadvantage state, and he doesn't have his darts, but, you know, one dart can do the job sometimes, and when you have a tech re like this... Oh, man, this guy is, this guy is getting the most out of his, his openings with, with the bubble. Oh, man, that, that, dang, this can cross up? This down smash is a, is a scary move, especially if you miss tech, because... Because he can... That was a cross-up. This is a scary 50-50. Oh, if you get knocked down by Rano too close, he can mix up a, a run-at-you down smash. And honestly, at this point, it's hard to tell which way you're going to get sent. So you might just die because your DI is wrong. Because who is expecting to go to the right? You know, some, I would think I'm going to the left, you know, if it's that fast, especially. So, yeah, kind of gross. Kind of gross. No, this is another thing I'm noticing. Kumi doesn't seem to have any any strategy yet in in terms of getting um marks or maybe not strategy but i mean like there's no there's no uh incentive it seems to make sure his opponents always mark like this should always be like the game plan like 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 uh seth should always be marked um like mabel was looking to mark mark you so she can kill you and recover because her you know her recovery looks kind of bad without her tether on you because she loses that mental 50 50 of just being able to come back in the uh, neutral for free if you time an attack wrong all because you're marked so you kind of want that mark as maple otherwise this kind of scenario can happen and you're just eating spam down tilts because he's not marked like you know this is that's the, the, the problem maple sometimes she's kind of uh, weak off stage if you call her out once dang and that might yeah and then she's so light so far away see this is when maple maple looks actually kind of fair <laughs> It's, it's just off stage, actually. It is off stage. Because even 
with everything she has, it would take a double jump up air, which is punishable. It would take a side B to the wall, and then you have to start dealing with wall jump pressure, you know, with them above your head, I mean. So, and, and if you get called out, you could just die because she's also light. So she is uh, actually kind of gambling off stage, but you do have to, you kind of have to know how to play around it. And that's something I still have to learn. <laughs> Myself is something to play around maple recovery. Tempest Peak. All right, so up air. Only first hit up air works that or hits that time, so he gets punished. Jab jab gets uh, crouch. See, this is something Maples are always looking for. They're just trying to fight back with down tilt. Like like he's getting jabbed. He's like, I just need the down tilt. So he just he just holding down it. Like they always do this. This is something I have to remember myself. When you're hitting up, when you're hitting Maple at low percent, even when she's in the air, they are trying to get to the ground and only retaliate with like down tilt. Because crouch cancel down tilt is so good on Maple. Oh wow, I actually kind of, I respect this this play by Kumi to like, again, you DI super far away from my dash attack, I'm gonna use this space to put down Lily, but, again though, you have to remember, this happened before though, so maybe Kumi should have um, remembered this because last time, Rana recovered with this super jump <laughs> tongue, and it stopped the, uh, it stopped the plant last time, so... Yeah, I mean, the idea is there, but against Rano, you kind of can't do it the same way. Ooh. I actually love this, spe this uh, ghetto special, a uh, ledge special, I mean, by Rano, because it's a it's a solid ledge special, because it's, all you need your ledge special to do is kind of be quick and awkward, because it, it kind of makes it so it's um it's more likely to, like, land. And so I kind of like his and Loxodons, because they're kind of similar in that they're both fast and awkward, and they kind of cover this giant, like... Uh, corner space right here, which is you know wide attack, but uh, Ronald gets this bubble behind him, and because both are super punishable, Loxodon and uh, Rano, it's kind of cool they leave behind their mechanic because now if you even if you hit them for doing this attack, they can just di to the bubble. But Rano gets out of that situation with that ledge special anyway. Oh, that di was almost enough to get him killed. Oh, really? That's crazy. Okay, so. Oh, uh, wait, what is he? This is kind of strange. So, this, this, I wonder if that was a double jump spent there because I'm kind of wondering if it was a double jump. Or, I think he would need a, a double jump to get that high. I'm just trying to break down this recovery because it's kind of insane how he got this far. Okay, so I, I think that was a double jump into up B. And then. Ronald can up B out of his out of his dive kick. Is that just new, or am I just have I just never seen that? Cause I've never seen that. Uh, looks like he just went from dive kick into another up B. Normally, it's like a double jump out of that. So it's kind of crazy. Ronald can now, it, unless yeah, again, call me crazy if, I, if this is wrong. But like Ronald can double jump up B, dive kick up B. That's crazy. It still didn't work out, <laughs> but I didn't know he could cancel die kick into another up B. Kind of interesting uh, recovery option. Oh, I like that turnaround up tilt just to get your back towards him after the up tilt and then you get the pressure with back air, which is far better uh, sometimes with Maple because she, sometimes she just kind of wants to link more moves together upward and not down because her fare is kind of... <sighs> Ah, her fair is just kind of laggy, so you can only do another fair, and if it does not the right percent, you can't get another fair all the time. So anyway, uh, well then you might be able to nair, and this is just a little more awkward. It's easier to combo off of maple back air, I feel. So anyway, this is kind of crazy because it gets knocked off stage here, weak back air, forward air, gets hit by darts, does this early up B, and I feel like the up B was done early because I don't know if Kumi plays Rivals of Ether, but you know, normally this is why you don't go off stage versus Maple that you know that much like, in Rivals of Ether because she can just hit you a up B for free if you go down there and then she just wall jump up B anyway or wall jump up air and then still be calm with you. So you don't want to go out there versus her, but you know, um, you're not gonna grab the ledge <laughs> if you're that low. Basically, is what I'm saying because you can't wall jump after this up B. So you kind of. Maybe that's like Rivals of Ether Syndrome <laughs> that kicked in there and caused that that SD. But you know that that's happened to me a few times. Dang, is he? Are those crouch cancels on those up on these up airs? Yeah, look at him. 
Yeah, look, and then this, this is what I'm saying. This is the this is that maple brain. This is the this is the new school maple brain. Cause this is what I was saying earlier about how when you hit maple, she's just looking for like these crouch cancel down tilts. Cause even though uh, Seth is underneath uh, Kumi, the down tilts are still coming out. Like so, it's like that's that maple brain of like I'm trying to hit you with that that CC down tilt if you hit me at low percent so you gotta you really like even i like it's so easy to forget to be honest for me because i'm still new to cc but you gotta be wary of the maple cc down to at low percent you really do otherwise you're gonna get opened up because they are looking for that they are looking for it oh i kind of like that re that jab again to reset the down tilt Oh man, gonna catch you with that drifter. You gotta, you gotta keep. Uh, I don't even know, honestly, if she can reach. If that's just her reaching, that's kind of crazy. I think it is her just reaching. Man, oh man, <laughs> Maple is gonna kill you. Uh, she would never get these kind of ubbies in the first game. So it's I just, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy that she's actually uh, chaining this together in this game, which is kind of nice because uh, you don't really get to see Maple's ubby too often in the first game because of. Um, how, how easy it is to like avoid the setups like you got to really be conditioned to get hit by maple up B or you know parried into like the up B or something like that or wrapped in up B okay back here off stage nice spacing on this recovery holy great up B speaking of up B this whole time up B grab ledge uh, invincible fair so that, that okay I did something else that's new again from rivals so there is no legend rivals so this is not even an option in rivals so using your your invincibility from the, the like the frame you basically get that ledge invincibility from your recovery you let go so you can fight back from the ledge with an invincible aerial um basically giving you a a, a free mix-up as the uh the defender so you basically get uh, more options out of out of disadvantage in this game from the ledge because we have invincible options like this Which is kind of nice because uh, sometimes the ledge can feel um, Very claustrophobic when you're on it, which is the point obviously, but a little little too uh, Centralized maybe so it's kind of nice again to have invincible options from the ledge But this is kind of gross because I see what I see now what Kumi's doing They're just they're kind of a, of a invincibility merchant because what's what's happening right now is Kumi's trying to grab this ledge just in hopes that Seth does an early up B because then the up B would basically be invincible um, blocked or it basically it wouldn't hit Kumi because it's invincible and then they would look for like some kind of smash deck but they get the smash deck anyway but this is some cake assault does too grab the ledge get the invincibility and then look for like an invincible punish so it seems that Kumi's actually using invincibility both in defense and offense, which is kind of nice. And that's, there goes Lily. Like it's crazy how Maple gets to take those kind of risks. See this up B? Maple gets to take the, these risks, these 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 kind of extremely low risk kill moves. Like if you had kept drifting there, you would have died. And if you try to catch Maple for that, it doesn't matter. Well, for one, the ledge there, which is nice. But two, Lily's still on the ground. So it's like Lily is still going to protect me for doing these risky options so that's why maple is again sometimes the best because she just gets to get away with things for free where other characters would have to pay the cost for dealing for doing these kind of uh moves and there's a bubble save hold on and he puts another one up there to reset it up and there's a second bubble save yo these are some oh my gosh i forgot about this moment this is actually the moment yeah <laughs> this is crazy Getting edge guarded. Nice tech. Looking for a third bubble save. A third maple up B. And you almost live it because of the bubble. And this is crazy. Like, this is what I'm saying. Sometimes maple is so annoying off stage. Like, she's supposed to have a bad recovery. But Kumi's playing with her options so well that it doesn't look like a bad recovery. <laughs> so, like, side B to get to the wall. Wall jump. Delay the options because you don't know what the Ronald's gonna do yet. But you know Ronald also doesn't know what you're gonna do, so he's giving you some space, which now gives you some some timing mix-ups to get to this ledge. So you can do this delayed up B, right? And then if it hits you, it's crazy how she's just hugging the wall, getting pelted a little bit, going for the 
be honest, I don't even know if this was in a... Was this supposed to be a sweet spot up B? So I believe this is supposed to be a sweet spot up B here. Because there's a delay. So it does. So Kumi does side B. Wall jump and then delays this wall jump looking to space for this sweet spot up B. But doesn't get the sweet spot up B. And so he can still be hit by Seth's down tilt here. But text it anyway. Uh, and then air dodges down so that they can't be hit of being for being above the ledge. So, and then they also have now time to reset up another spaced sweet spot up B, but again, doesn't get the sweet spot. Uh, it goes above the ledge this time again, and it hits Seth. And then Seth misses the bubble on that DI for the third time, and he dies. And that forces a game five. <laughs> So game five is on the Delta. I love the stage. Ooh, dash tag. Start it off. Oh, and there again. Look at this is the third three for three. Maple gets hit in neutral. She starts holding down. She's getting jabbed up. She's already on the ground. She's fighting down. She's fighting now, I mean, with down or back, I mean, with down tilt. Like, that's what we gotta get really aware with is this is a CC down tilt from Maple at low percents, just trying to get that opening. And, and look how well Seth is actually already playing around it. This, this is like, this is so fun to watch because his spacing with Rano is so good that even when you're crouch canceling me and trying to down tilt me, I'm already gone because I'm respecting it. Like that's crazy. And then comes back in with the grab on the landing and up throw up air and then wait for the tech. Oh, it doesn't get the up air. But gets another fair opening and doesn't get the tech chase now uh, because Kumi waits a little bit for the option and then sees that he's waiting for him to go in and goes to the left. And now he's comboing Seth. Oh, both going for grabs because this is the thing. Once you get a grab, this is something that, um, you know, Smash already know. People, people who play Smash already know. But when you get a grab, it, it changes the momentum of the game because they now have to play your game. And that's why a lot of times you're gonna see people just looking for grabs. Like, like this is crazy. Like grabs are the easiest way to say you're playing my game. And so you're gonna see people go for grabs like this so often. Like it's, it's such a powerful option. That's why I told you pummel specials were gonna be the best. It's cause, well not that I'm trying to be like the guy who's you know is right, but like I'm just saying like, I knew Pumpa Specials would be the, the most oppressive because grabs are like the most like greedy thing in Plat Fighters, as you can see on the screen. So like, yeah, they both want it. They <laughs> uh, that's what makes this set so hype though, because he, both these players want to win so badly. Oh, I love it. So I like this down tilt. You see, just kind of threatening a zone. Like, okay, if you keep running at me, this down tilt is going to scoop you up, right? And it's pretty low lag, so I'm going to keep moving because that was a whiff. And Seth's gonna take space because he whips. So he's going to cover a jump potentially and doesn't get it. So now he's kind of on the ground again versus Rano, but chooses to still a fight because Maple's frames are so good. Uh, that Nair can still go into a down tilt even on whip and now puts Rano to the air. But he texts because, oh my goodness, some kind of a little bit of an awkward spacing, I guess, from Kumi to follow up off of that, that down tilt. And so gets this, or maybe tries to even delay this dash attack to catch the landing. But regardless, it whiffs and that gives uh, Seth the opportunity to get a, a gimp here. And this is what I'm saying. You see how this dart was so insane. Look at the dart. It took the jump of Maple, which I think in this game is just GG Maple. Because you can kind of harass her. If you, like, if, like, let's say Ronald throws his dart and then Seth grabs the ledge. And then he back airs her. She just dies. You know, because an invincible back air, you have no double jump. In Rivals 1, it'd be so much harder to do that to her. Like, because her up B would just be wall jump canceled into, like, another up air, which has three hitboxes that you have to respect. And then she has another up B, which has two more hitboxes, and you have to respect that. And then if by the time you're respecting that, she's landed, and, again, and she has all her stuff back. But in this game, she's getting her double jump sniped, right? And if she does, if she didn't have this tether, any little dinky hit would have essentially gimped her from out here so this is why it's so important that maple has that mark on you because it can make a, a huge um disadvantage like that just disappear and instead of you dying there you're comboing rano 
This is why maple is so gross. <laughs> With the, I mean, a delayed double jump. Oh, scoops. Four there. Grab ledge and then roll up, but Ronald's recovery goes so much further in this game. Aw, oh, man. I just want to see this because this, this is a good 50-50. So, like, right here. So... So Kumi has to roll up now if he doesn't want to get hit by Rano up B, right? So you're going to have to roll up because if he goes to the ledge, you're going to get hit and then you're, you'll be off stage. So they roll up because they're not invincible. Honestly, they were so slow. I think they actually could have gotten hit. So by the time Rano would have got there, um, Kumi would have gotten hit. So that's why they picked this invincible option from the ledge, which is the roll, right? Uh, but because Seth did not choose to hit Kumi and went above the ledge, this roll actually makes this recovery option safe. And honestly, I think he was a couple frames plus there. So that was a good 50-50 from Seth there to go above Kumi, but still gets caught by that maple uppercut and dies for it. I like that use of your invincibility to get rid of maple for a second, or Lily there for a second, or just get really, really, really in general with that second, and then send Maple off stage in a fair. Ooh, I like that crouch, down tilt just to go underneath a potential aerial. And the down tilt, so I'm saying Maple is so, like not predictable, she's so vulnerable at the ledge. I, like this is probably her, her weakest moment, is like these kind of interactions. Like, I mean, to be honest, this was asking, this is a little greedy up here, to be honest. Um, but, um, she is kind of vulnerable when she's recovering, and you do have to like poke at her, or at least try to. Sweet spot back air almost does it. Oh, looking for an up tilt there, kind of, kind of interesting. I wonder if that's supposed to be an up, up strong or something. Oh, that's a Dacus. Oh my gosh, or fair center stage and then a Galaxy at 170. I feel like that. I feel like that is actually kind of strong. Holy. Maple is light though. Oh wow, I like that. Up to in the grab. Holy. Oh, try to throw these darts. This is like Rano's easiest opening of these 45 degree darts. Like, nice whiff punish. Well, nice movement to get a whiff punish opportunity, but doesn't actually get the execution correctly on the, the, the dart angle here. And so it misses, and so he can't get like another opportunity to follow up. And so it kind of has to like do some awkward aerial to like land now but gets anti-aired by uh, Maple down to and, but it kind of returns back into neutral because it was such an awkward position for both players and we're back into neutral yet again so both looking for opening and we give to Rano's grab game again <laughs> honestly it's kind of just a skirmish they're kind of just both looking for the same thing which is just a raw hit in the neutral or in neutral into an advantage state but it's not really coming together for either yet Oh, you get, until we got this uh, maple uh, three piece. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like right here, though. I, I'm kind of a little. Um, this is a little something. I don't know. So right here, I guess it's just so many options Rano has from the ledge that uh, Kumi decides just to put up Lily and then go back into neutral because they're playing a lot of neutral this stock. So they're like, all right, if we're playing neutral, when we put Lily down, I thought she was dead for some reason. <laughs> I have to remember her side B can be wall jump canceled. Just it's just her up B. Ooh, that down, down strong was asking for a, a lot, to be honest, a quick little kill. Oh, man, I like how Seth was playing around the ground game right here with these jump, these little short hops. Oh, my, okay, you, you're DIing down, but you're at a percent where CC doesn't work. So now you holding down means you're putting yourself into a tech chase, which is perfect. So I'm going to down to you because you put yourself on the ground. You put yourself on the ground again because you're still holding down. Uh, you know, because like the crouch cancel mentality, and so you're doing an, a, a, a normal get up, and I'm jumping just in case you do an attack. Uh, and you did an attack, uh, I guess. But so I guess the timing was off. But the jump was, I believe, for to play around like a get up attack. But her get up attack actually still hit him in the air. And then she goes for the kill. I love Ronald back throw. I love that. I think on Di in it sets up into a forward air uh, setup, which is so nice for Rano. Ooh, double down strong, gonna take it. Wow, wow, wow. And she just, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean. Like, Maple will just die off stage. Because if you're not marked, if you are not marked, that fair sent her so disgustingly low and far away and in so much hits done.
that at this angle, even if she had double jump and double jump up air in a side B, actually she may have been able to make it, but it wouldn't have been a good recovery because it would have just been able to be like grab ledge and roll up type of recovery because she was so far away. And after Maple's recovery actually looks pretty bad. It just she can't make it from those distances at high percent because she's so light. And the wall jump uh, system actually does hurt her because she kind of needed her up B to give her that verticality into a wall, another wall jump up B. So uh, I guess that's the that's the biggest Maple nerf is really her recovery. You gotta abuse her recovery. Oh, I love this movement. This is so insane. So Maple is 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 the fa is faster. Oh my god, K Kumi's actually moving. Kumi is moving right now, literally. So like, it's crazy because Maple is actually faster when she's running than when she's wave dashing, and that is emphasized heavily in Rivals 2. So this is like a, a cool combination of both her her run speed and her wave dash micro space movement like like using you know dash dance there to mix up where you're gonna go in you're actually committing to the run in this time looking for a, a forward tilt approach it doesn't work out but it's okay you're gonna read a run in and get a down tilt because it's pretty fucking big to be honest and it's low committed so you do a down tilt and it actually works out knocks him up up you think it's gonna go oh no you actually just just follow up with nair uh short hop or hit fall even and then you're following up with a down smash right and this is the thing. Like, this maple play is so clean. Like, look at that micro spacing with her wave dash. Like, her wave dash doesn't go nearly as far in this game because it's better at micro spacing while keeping her hurt box really low to the ground. Like, this is her wave dash. Look at how hard it would be to hit this tiny hurt box, like, raccoon. You, it would be, it's so hard to hit her while she's wave dashing. So, in combination with her, her crazy grounds, like, run speed, and her, her small hurt box while wave dashing, she's impossible to hit on the ground. And, and Kumi is like using that perfectly in this moment, specifically. Look at that. You're not going to catch me. I'm going to wave dash away first just to see how much space I'm working with. And I'm like, no, I need more space. I'm going to keep running, right? And I ran outside of your grab range. And then I'm like, I want center stage and not have center stage. Like, that is so powerful to just have this speed. Like, I'm just, I, I go in when I want. You have to get, like, like Seth jumps off the ground here because of this 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 grounded pressure. Like he whiffs a grab, trying to hit this Miss Maple, right? And then goes for like like a run up shield, but Maple has so much speed. Like he's respecting Maple. Look at how much respect Rano is giving Maple because of how much slower he is than Maple. He has to respect her more in this sequence. So he has to play like this, and the fact that he's down seventy percent. So, um. Kumi's allowed to make more um, brash decisions being at only 20%. So if Kumi went to this down smash and, you know, and Seth went to down smash even and they, and they traded, you know, Kumi, or Kumi would live because he's at 20 and you would probably die because you're at 90 with Rano. You know, so I'm saying you can't even uh, trade. So you ha there's so many reasons, to be honest, why Kumi is respecting or Seth is respecting Kumi. I'm sorry I could do that in this video, but... There's so many reasons why Seth is respecting Kumi, but one of those reasons is because this maple movement is just impossible to, to na nail down to the point he just jumps out of shield. I can't be on the ground. <laughs> and then does a second down tilt because it's so low lag, right? And looks for a tech chase or even a missed tech opportunity for an up smash here. And this keeps fighting back on disadvantage with this down tilt, which again, she's at such a low percent that she still has a CC down tilt on the table. Like, look at that CC down tilt. That's what it was. CC down tilt is still on the table. So, and if you, if we don't remember this, we're just always going to get CC down tilt by Maple. And I'm pretty sure we're all never going to remember this for like a year or two because it just, <laughs> it just seems like a lot to think about. This game is, is this game is pretty sick. <laughs> Another CC down, and that was a CC down tilt to take the set. That's what I'm talking about. Look, you're hitting her. CC down tilt, baby. You, you got to remember the CC. Man, and, that, and that's probably... Dang, that's gonna that's gonna force so much discipline, because normally you you get a, a juicy nair like that low percent you're gonna keep hitting people. That's kind of what what our brains tell us. So <laughs> you gotta really fight that urge to keep hitting people when they have the the low enough percent to CC down tilt. 
and then kill you and win the, and win losers finals for it. That's crazy. That was a great set. Yeah, I, learned, I feel like I learned so much watching that set. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys also learned a little bit, and I hope you guys enjoyed that set. So uh, yeah, it's been Rottweiler. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, peace out.